I had to get them and teach them how to soften. Okay. And then within the week, I became the student. Uh -huh. So when I went to Mysore, India, I like to talk about that, how that happened. When I was trying to find myself last year to teach myself how to be alone, okay. not depend on my relationships and be okay in the world. Because the fear was, is that I was going to be traveling in the world alone. Uh -huh. That's why I never went out there in my earlier days. I never I always wanted to wait on my partner so they can get there. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's no good. So, <laughs> Because they actually will, they'll, they'll water their seed when they're ready. And I had to learn that. But um, I was hindering myself when I did this. So one day I just finally, I said, I'm going to let go of all this relationship thing, yeah. emotions, bitterness. I've got stuff to work on from childhood all the way up to get me where my happy is. Like, mm -hmm. where's my happy? Yeah. And uh, so I went to a Yudea retreat with Rashida last year. She asked me to co-teach um, with her. I was very honored. I was very, very honored. I'm getting emotional because I didn't really know what was going to happen when I got there because an incident had happened in Chicago prior to me going there that closed the gap to make it beautiful. Okay. And so I knew it was God. I was like, okay, God, okay, what are you trying to show me? So I go to this retreat and these women are here and I'm learning how to do this seven day detox and we're drinking juice and everything I love to do. We're in nature. We're running through the forest half naked, just feeling <laughs> grand, you know, and yeah. chasing each other to race. Uh, one is on one side and one is on the other. It's like a a, um, a U shape and we had to meet and cross uh -huh. and meet at the other end. Oh. So it's just to get that out of my system and to eat well, to look at the pictures and see how I was um, mentally stressed and didn't know. And that these women kind of helped me to to be their teacher and to be honored and just be raw. Yeah. It was nice to be like a student. And um, so I started going back to Chicago twice a month just to go to Rashidat's um, Lakeshore class okay. in Indianapolis and just to see a community building. And, um, and then I got this phone call on Facebook Messenger <laughs> <laughs> from an Indian man that asked me about the classes and asked me had I ever been to Mysore. Now, for years, I would see Ashtanga Mysore uh -huh. on people's schedules and classes at studios. Yeah. But it never registered me to me what that really was. Okay. Because I never really took Ashtanga. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, this is <laughs> this is where people go and like get the that train at that uh -huh. Mysore. <laughs> okay. I was like, okay. I was like, well, so what's up? And he was like, well, you, I see that you're with a community of people and you're with the Black Yoga Teachers Alliance and we kind of want to reach out to you guys and see if you guys are interested in coming and see if we have a program here that we can probably serve you. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I wasn't, I was a little leery about it because I was like, why did you pick me out of all the people? And so I said, well, you need to show me proof and you need to show me where the lodging is through video. And so for five months, we were on video. I was seeing the locations and the city and people that met the driver. That was a um, a driver that actually drive drove Kino McGregor. Oh, yeah. So once I saw that, I was like, okay, well, this might be okay. It's legit, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I prayed with them and they took me to the temples. And so I mm. was praying for um, future things to happen and just for awareness and to open up and be okay and just trust the unknown. And um, really, it was when I saw Kino, that was the confirmation. So and I decided that I was going to go on this journey because um, my daughter had graduated and my son, he was in college and they were doing well. And and I said, oh, I don't know how to take care of myself when I wake up in the morning. I didn't really have a structured routine for myself. I had been taking care of children yeah. and everyone else. And was structuring for everyone else. So I had to get with me because <laughs> I was just wake up in the morning and I would thank God for waking up and have my tea. You know, I would do that. But I really just didn't I really didn't have something to jumpstart me. Yeah. And getting on the mat alone wasn't enough for me. I love doing yoga with other people, but I really needed to learn how to get with me because it starts with me. And uh, so I started getting on the mat a little more and I started telling myself, remember, you started Colorful Yogis, get on the mat for yourself also to also not just motivate others, but you got to get on the mat. And I was like, is that really true that I have to get on the mat every day? Mm -hmm. You know, in my mind as a yogi, yeah. almost 20 years, I'm not, I wasn't on the yogi on the mat every day. 
but mentally I was there or I would read or I would do tea or I would do you meditation. I was practicing. Every day. I was practicing, not, not but asana. not physical. Exactly. So then that's when I got into my eight limbs again. Uh, okay. And someone mentioned the niyamas and the yamas. And I was like, I got to get back with that. Because <laughs> I think you were doing an interview with, I don't know who it was. I think it was Lisa. Or maybe it was Marsha. It was yeah. Marsha. You two were talking about how you guys get reminded because of teacher training. Every six months. Yeah, right. We're, every we're six months. So book. you have to have integrity. So I was like, yeah, that's that kind of that kind of integrity. And it could be hard, you know, because you got to check yourself because there yeah. it is by smacking your face. And uh, so I was getting real with myself and starting to kind of get into the eight limbs again. And um, um, I decided to go on this journey with myself okay. and healing journey. So I call it my yoga journey and healing tour. Okay. And as I go out, I'll also lay hands and work and do Thai yoga massage with my Thai fascia and just start telling people about it. And if I can guest teach in places and just be nomadic. Mm -hmm. And so I gave my address up and gave it to my daughter. So I have no address. So okay. that's why I call myself this yogi digital nomad because I'm on a social media to, to rise and to travel and start to explore other yogis and other locations and to tell them to be a student. It's okay to be a student. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. So I'm being a student. So I went to uh, my steps where I went to Vegas for like 28 days and went into meditation and just focused with myself. I have a family friend there and I pretty much stayed in the back room and did a lot of reading and on the mat, writing figuring out what exactly I wanted to put in the future for the unknown, what I'm going to do when I get to Mysore, what's really going to happen here. Why am I going to Mysore? Yeah. Um, Cause I'm not set up in a training class. I'm actually going to see a family and see what's to come, what they want to present to me. Cause I'm going to consult. Okay. And I'm actually going with a blind eye. I don't know what's really going to come out of this. And so after the 28 days, I came back to Indianapolis Got some settled in some things, got some clients together and told them that I was going to be leaving and that I would be back. And so I got the ticket, did the visa, started writing everything down. I said, because I must have I must have to teach this to someone else <laughs> because something's going to happen out of this. So I started documenting things Okay, that's good. So I was like I better document things. And so um, some of the things I went through with the, getting my e-visa, you know, it was a little difficulty and making sure you have the measurements properly correct. You know, you could get denied. Oh, and, your yeah. photo. And all oh, that. God. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a mess. But, you know, I did it. It was an experience and I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> like anything that happened wrong, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to get there. And um, I wanted to see uh, Guru Sagaru. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see him at the huge festival that they oh, have. Oh, they, we, yeah, yeah. They, yeah um, starts with an S. Yeah, at Isha Yoga, Isha Yoga, and it's the um, Mahashi Vivaratri. Yes, in yes. Like March or something. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to get there for that, and then I found out you had to take the inner engineering yeah. uh, training before you can do that. So I was like, I'm just gonna go and get there, and I'll be there in the monks of the three million. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just be there. It's huge. So yeah, I mean, it looked huge. It looked beautiful. So my goal was to get there to get to that, and then my driver was gonna pick me up from there because they were gonna go. Okay. Well, that didn't happen because my e-visa wasn't ready. Oh, okay. So I ended up going after that event. And then I uh, flew to Dubai. Um, and then I went into Bangalore. And when I got to Bangalore, I was in the in the airline and was so nervous because I really like looked like no one. <laughs> and I was so tall. Oh. And so I got it on camera, too. And I was like, OK, you guys, out those doors over there, I'm supposed to go out the doors, but I see nothing but eyes and they're all Indians. Yeah. And so I was like freaking out. I was thinking, what are you doing? Like you've danced in front of thousands. You've taught in front of many people. Yeah. And I was so nervous. <laughs> I was like a little kid. Yeah. yeah. So I go out the door and then I hear someone say Latin, Latin. And it's Brother Harish and Brother Harish just grabs me and takes my bags. And in my mind. I'm thinking, because people are always asking me all these questions. You don't know where you're going. You don't know these people. Yes, I had a lot of that in the back of my head. But I had prayed so much and had such good energy that by the time I got there and once I saw his face, I knew I was okay. Uh -huh. And I knew I was okay when I got in the car and it was a two-hour trip where I fell asleep. 
yeah. I would never fall asleep with someone I don't know. Right. But God just put me to sleep. Yeah. And the next thing I knew, I was inside Mysore in front of Mr. Pradeep's home. <laughs> and I looked up and I said, did I go to sleep? And he said, yes, you went to sleep. <laughs> and I looked and it was this beautiful home. I was in the city or these beautiful homes. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm really here. And so yeah. then I get out and they're taking my bags and taking me upstairs. And I just knew I was safe. And it looked like everything that I looked at. And um, each day uh, they were slowly uh, winging me in to meet the family. And I met the, the mother of the house. Um, so I, I lived with a politician and they have an Airbnb up top. Okay. So um, the family member that is a guru over there that's known in the city was coming to start teaching in the mornings. But I started teaching the first week. And then the second week he came and it was nothing that I expected. I mean, I knew I could do yoga, but he was doing things that looks like a rubber band. <laughs> and, and he was four nine. Oh, so wow. it was really short. And yeah. I was thinking, oh, man, he he's bad, but, you know, <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then I had the fans going for my class for the first week. They turned the fans off. Uh -huh. So that was the first realization that I said, oh, you're a student today. And mm, so yeah. from those three and a half weeks, we did yoga every day, except on Sunday, which is considered holiday. And, um, and we only did like two hours of yoga. And then periodically I would go up the top of the terrace and practice a little bit. But those two hours of that practice every single day for six days a week transformed my body. And then I walked around with a 2.5 liter container of water. I drank water for 40 days while I was there. Yeah. And it probably had maybe two side drinks on the side, but the rest was water all day. And um, we scootered everywhere and I started meeting more people and um some of the um, the driver had introduced me to some Japanese um, chicks that were taking yoga at one of the ashrams. Yeah. And, and I started meeting other people who were in, that were in Gokulam, you know, yeah. over there versus I was in the other part of uh, the city. And so I felt real honored. And then they fed me and they did everything they said they were going to do mm -hmm. um, and took me around and showed me all the different areas. I went up to Chamundi Hill. We did that a lot, like three, four times. This is big hill as if it's like the Hollywood yeah. hill. So imagine looking out at L.A. Of course, that's what Mysore looks like. I don't know if you were able. To do I haven't been to Mysore. You haven't no. been to Mysore yet? No. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, in Mysore, that they had this Chamundi Hill that's huge. You can see it everywhere. And so just think of Hollywood yeah. hills. And when you look out, the infrastructure is the same way. So they're like um, one of the main... Um, number one infrastructures that's in India Yeah. Um, that the other cities are mocking. Okay. Um, and they still have the tradition there in Mysore. So everything is traditional. There's no gestures of flirtation. There's no gestures of holding hands. And you'll see every now and then the youth periodically holding hands, but yeah. not much. But so over time, in about 20 years, they're going to really be a functioning city, like to the point of they're selling lots. I mean, it's just yeah. so much land out. There. It's beautiful out there. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I talked to some people that went over there like in the 70s. Uh, yeah. And there was no cars, mm -mm. no TVs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then by the 80s, it was becoming more Western and like it was like this rapid evolution. And, yeah. It's just happening. Some of those guys were like, oh, like I used to like to go because it was, wasn't so Western. So Western. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That, that the, shift's um, been coming, it sounds like. Yeah. What I noticed also when I first got there, there like was trash kind of all in the streets. And then by the 30 days when the election, because I was there during the election, okay. when the election was final, then you started seeing these um, trucks moving and just tearing down everything on the sides of the street. It didn't matter what, if half of your house was there. That's just what it was. They yeah. gave them a warning and they just went all up and through the streets, through the villages, through the city and moved everything and pushed everything out. Okay. So that was very interesting to see because yeah. I ended up going to Bangalore twice. My experience is I missed a flight. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of my, I said, okay, God, I must be missing a flight because someone that I'm going to bring over here, may, that may happen to them <laughs> and I got to be prepared. So I was stuck in the airport for about 12 hours. That yeah. was an interesting experience to be able to not know the language. No one really understanding what I'm saying. Um, 
no American plugs to charge oh, your cell phones. Okay, okay, yeah. I wasn't prepared. My credit card didn't work. Oh. So in this experience of this, I was fasting. So I remember my credit card doesn't work. 